Now let's talk about requirements documentation. The result of the effort that you put into requirements development is a documented agreement between the customers and the developers about the product that's going to be built. It's important that the requirements are fully documented in the way that best captures the process, which is why you want to use software that is specially designed for requirements documentation. Software requirements can be represented in a number of different ways. For instance, you can use documents that utilize well-structured, clearly written natural language. You can see graphical models that illustrate system states, transformational processes, data relationships, logic flows, or object classes. Or you can represent the requirements with formal specifications that define features using mathematically precise formal logic languages. Structured natural language accompanied by graphical models continues to be the most practical way for the majority of software projects to document their requirements. As you know, business objectives describe the business problem that's being resolved or the business process that's being improved. You'll want to summarize the important business benefits that the product will provide in a quantitative and measurable way. State the factors that have the greatest impact on achieving success and specify the measurements criteria to assess whether or not the business objectives have been met. When the requirement documentation is done, we recommend that you send it out to all of the stakeholders to let them know what the output of the process will be and ask them to review it. The truth is, people are always far more committed to making the process successful if they feel they are involved and know the plan. From a beautiful sports car to the perfect juicy burger, all the finest things in life have certain characteristics that combine to make them great. Excellent requirements have a set of characteristics too. One such characteristic is that they're complete. Each requirement needs to fully describe the functionality to be delivered. It's got to contain all the information necessary for the developer to design and implement that feature. Another characteristic of excellent requirements is that they are correct. Each requirement must accurately describe the functionality that needs to be built. The reference should be the source of the requirement or the person who asked for it. It could be a user, for instance. Only users can determine the correctness of user requirements, which is why they should always be involved in the process. Bear in mind that a requirement that conflicts with another requirement is not correct. Excellent requirements are feasible. It has to actually be possible to implement each requirement with the known capabilities and limitations of the system. The developers should work with the people that define the requirements to make sure that they're doable. Each requirement should be necessary. Every requirement should be for a feature that the customers really need or are required for compatibility with an external system or regulations. Excellent requirements are also prioritized. Assign a priority to each functional requirement to indicate how essential it is to a particular product release. Prioritizing is vital because if all the requirements are classified as equally important, then it's hard for the project manager to respond to budget cuts, schedule overruns, new requirements added during the development, or other factors that require updates to the development plan. Requirements should be unambiguous. Write requirements in simple, concise, and straightforward language so that nobody reading them could possibly misinterpret them. If requirements are not explained precisely and completely, there's the danger that developers will end up trying to fill in the blanks on their own. Requirements that are too ambiguous could also end up creating different expectations on the part of stakeholders, leading to disappointment with the development results. Requirements should be independent. If a requirements development is dependent on the development of other requirements, it might cause prioritization and planning problems. For example, suppose a customer is selected as a high priority a requirement that is dependent on a low priority one. In this case, 
the low priority feature would have to be developed as well before developing the high priority feature. When there is no way to avoid dependencies, you can combine the dependent features into one larger independent requirement or find another way of splitting them. And the last characteristic of excellent requirements, verifiable. Try devising a few tests or other verification procedures to figure out whether or not the product properly implements each requirement. There are several requirement attributes that should be recorded during the documentation process. These attributes include unique ID number, the date the requirement was created, its current version number, the requirement status, such as requirements, design, development, or complete, the origin and source of the requirement, the requirement type, for example, mandatory, optional, or future version, the names of the requirement author, and the person responsible for ensuring that the requirement is developed successfully. The owners of the requirements who will make decisions about proposed changes. Any subsystems to which the requirement is allocated. A product release number to which the requirement is allocated. And approval status, that is approved, pending, or rejected. Other requirements attributes that should be recorded during documentation include the objective, which is the business objective to which this requirement is related to, and also the implementation priority. You have to break down the project into processes or user stories. Each process represents a sequence of actions that users take to complete a task that will help them to achieve a business objective. For example, in our Drapes e-commerce website, one process could be searching for drapes. Another process is selecting drapes and adding them to the shopping cart. Each process groups a set of features that enable the product user to use the system to complete the task. So you break down each process or story into a list of features. You'll find that it's easier to list the features by the order that they'll be used by the user. For instance, take the process of selecting drapes and adding them to the shopping cart. One feature will be a search engine that enables the user to search for drapes based on the criteria like color, size, type of drapes, and fabric. Another feature would be selecting the characteristics of the drapes before adding them to the shopping cart. Selecting the color, the size, accessories that can be added to the drapes, and so on. Once you've listed the features of each process, it's time to start drilling down into each feature. Write a clear description of the way the feature should work and what components it should include, such as buttons, screen layout, field types, value ranges, and so on. The description should be very detailed and very well organized so that the developers will know exactly what needs to be done. You don't want to leave anything for them to guess. Usually developers don't talk to users and clients so they don't always fully understand the client needs. If you leave them with too much room for interpretation, then they might take the product in the wrong direction. As a result, the team could end up developing a product that is completely different from what the client expected to get. And then you would need to start the development process all over again, or make changes to the product after it has been developed. Obviously, that would cost you a great deal of money waste a lot of time and leave you with extremely angry clients. So that's why it's very important to have a clear, detailed, and organized description of how the features should work. Use simple language, avoid complex sentences, and assume the readers have no basic knowledge of the project. Use consistent terminology, utilizing the same terms throughout the document so that no one will get confused. If the feature description includes too many items and starts to get too long, you might want to consider dividing it into a few smaller features. The idea is that a feature description should be about a specific functionality, but you want to keep the balance of not going into too much resolution. 
You don't define a requirement for every button that you have on the screen. But if a feature includes a new smaller feature, each smaller feature has a different role and requires detailed definition, you should break it into several smaller requirements. Let's take, for example, the shopping cart feature. This is a large part of functionality that should be divided into smaller requirements. For instance, the option to add items to the shopping cart is one requirement. The option to edit or delete items from the shopping cart is another feature. How the shopping cart should be displayed on the screen with page layouts, buttons, and fields is a separate requirement. The payment process is also a feature that we should define independently. So I list the shopping cart requirements under a feature group called purchasing process. Each feature in this group will help the user to complete a small part of the purchasing process until the user can accomplish her business objective of buying the drapes. Here are three letters you should know. SRS. That stands for Software Requirements Specification. Functional requirements are documented in an SRS which fully describe the expected behavior of the software system. The SRS also includes non-functional requirements like performance goals and the descriptions of quality attributes. The SRS states the functions and capabilities that a software system must provide and the constraints it must respect. It's the basis for all subsequent project planning, design, coding, and testing. Customers, the marketing department, sales staff, project managers, the software development team, the testing group, maintenance and support staff, documentation writers, training personnel, legal staff, and subcontractors all rely on the SRS. Needless to say, it's really important. Requirements management software, like Elementool, creates the SRS automatically based on the requirements that you submit to the system. You can even create shorter versions of SRS with a set of a few specific features, in case you want to discuss these features with your team. You do that by simply selecting the features you want to include in the SRS and then the software generates the document for you.